Today, we're gonna go over makeup, but we're not gonna go over my makeup routine. Although, I'm sure you would all love how I do my epic eyeliner I do every single day, or even a Halloween glam look for Halloween coming up. But instead, today, we're gonna be going over the history of makeup, some popular products, and how this can lead to careers, and some of the ethical criticism of animal testing. So let's get our eyeshadow palettes and let's jump right into it. Makeup was found in Egypt, BC, but it gained popularity in the 1800s. Women had their own recipes and typically shared them around with their family and friends. Some of the popular things that we could see were powders and lotions that helped lighten their appearance to hide blemishes and freckles. Back then, you couldn't do anything colorful, not even a rainbow look, because back then, if you did that, you would be considered conspicuous. So instead, women would use berries on their lips and their cheeks as eyeshadow, blush, and lipstick. But then in the 1880s, actual makeup companies started. Women would start, typically start with an agency called California Perfume Company, which is also known as Avon today. But back then, makeup was really toxic, being laced with nitric acid and mercury. So talk about having a hot new lipstick lip look when your lips are actually burning off. Ouch. But in the 1920s, when the rising of Hollywood stars, big, bold eye looks and eyeliner were popular because they wanted to look just like the people on TV. They were considered more promiscuous back then. In the 1930s, looking tan was the go. So they would have lotion to get that tan glam that they would all aim for. In the during the World War II era, women were starting to get into men's jobs and the military for nursing. So to do this, they wanted to enhance their femininity. They wanted to show this is a symbolism because they are just equally as hardworking as men were back then. And then after the World War II era, 80 to 90% of consumers were teenage girls. So Revlon and Avon would start to cater all of their products towards teenagers during this time. Since now we got the base done of history, let's start with our concealer. Okay. Um, some popular products that can we see today. According to the Glamour 2022 Rewards, there is a ton of makeup on this lip list, so buckle up because we have a lot to go over. First, we can see the Charlotte Tilbury Con Foundation, the Beauty In You Moisturizer, Land Cum Concealer, and Benefit Concealer. Although I did say there's a lot on this list, I don't want our makeup to crease. So let's just get back, just keep go rolling. So, of course, in order to get this makeup on the list, people had to review this makeup. And a large portion of people who do that are called beauty influencers. When I say beauty influencers, you might think of people like Trixie Mattel or James Charles, but we don't really talk about him. <laughs> um, Kylie Jenner and even Tati Westbrook, but I promise you, there's way more. Um, to get started in your influencer career, YouTube is a very popular platform. According to the India Times, over 88 million videos were makeup related. Just to start this, you can just set up a camera, review your favorite makeup, the color, quality, whatever. You can just upload it to YouTube. How fun is that? But in order, but you can also get even higher up in your influencer career. You can get sent things such as PR packages, which is when the brand personally sends you their own makeup and you get paid to do it. Paid to do free makeup looks. I think that's fun. So now we got all of that done. Let's get into some of the ethical criticism that we see. So remember how I said there's nitric acid and mercury in the lipsticks and stuff? Well, people were finally starting to get a problem with that because people were also being blinded by their mascara. No one wants to be blinded by their own beauty. So what is animal testing exactly? It's not putting makeup on your dog. I promise you that. But makeup, according to the FDA in Humane Society, is when you rub, inject, or feed chemicals or products into animals such as rabbits, mice, or bunny. Rabbits, mice, or rats. There we go. But a lot of people had criticism with this, obviously. Genetically, we are way, way different than a rat, mouse, or bunny. So when you inject chemicals into one of these animals, they can either, either have a positive reaction because their bodies might be able to subdue these chemicals better than ours, or since they're so much smaller than us, the amount of chemicals used can just kill them. 
but it wouldn't be the same as for a human. So people had a lot of problems with that too. Obviously, the one problem we also have is how cruel is that? To test makeup on an animal, not fun, not cool whatsoever. So I know different ways that we can do this is scientists have even found ways to make artificial human cells and membranes where they can inject the chemicals into these animals, not into the animals, but instead of to this. Obviously, you can also do human stuff, but like that's not the safest option either. So that's why doing this sci new scientific method, we can lower uh, animals being killed in blind, deafened, or just prone to diseases. And the night 1970s, the FDA finally was wanted to do something else about the animal testing. So they have lowered the laws of different states being able to do this. And then actually, just recently, two years ago, the, Unis the United States is trying to pass a bill so we don't have to do this anymore. And in fact, nine states have already banned animal testing altogether. Well, that was a lot of information to learn today. And I'm sure you all didn't expect to learn about makeup. I mean, I didn't know much about makeup either, and I wear it every day. So I learned a lot doing this research, and I hope you guys all did too. So since we learned so much today, let's do a recap of what we learned. We learned about the history of makeup, some popular products and careers, and ethical criticism of animal testing. Okay.